move away the tenant and we wanted to walk away with 15,000 pounds. So he came to our office and we agreed, okay Bob, we're going to take the property on and sometime in the future we're going to pay 15,000 pounds. So we signed the joint venture agreement and agreed that we're going to take over his mortgage payments and on completion we're going to pay him 15,000 pounds. That what went into the joint venture agreement. So soon we moved in buyers. Trainee doctors. Um, again, this couple was from uh, Nigeria. They uh, were newly married. Um, they had spent a little bit of money on their wedding and ran out of cash, but they still had 12,000 pounds. And they love the fact that they can buy with 5,000 pounds deposit and they don't have to put all the money in. So they wanted to put only 5,000 pounds and spend some on improving the property because the property was in very great condition after the tenant left. So um, they wanted to redecorate the property, change the carpet, and make it look like a family home. So can you remember how much they, uh, they pay each month? They pay 807 pounds. So we cash flow 480 after making the mortgage payment on behalf of Bob. And uh, again, three to five years, we expect them to cash out, go and get a mortgage, or maybe sell the house and, uh, and move on. So we're going to cash flow 28,800 over the five year period and uh, then they owe us some money at the back end once they cash out and that balance will be £22,000. So how much do we pay for this? Well, we paid nothing for it. How much do we make out of this? I don't think you even have seen the property in person. No, I've not. Did you go and look at it? I did, yes. Okay. So we made 55000 anyway on that particular property over the five year term. Um, we haven't got a tenant in there, so we're not paying any uh, maintenance. We haven't got any voids or repairs. All we have to do is check the standing order on 28 of every month if it's coming from. So this looks like a bit of a lemon, is it? It's a lemon. Well, it was a lemon to Bob, wasn't the it? The landlord didn't like it, obviously. He no. felt it was a lemon and he wanted to get rid of it. So what is a lemon anyway? <laughs> lemon is a property that you don't want to own. Looks a bit like that. Served up a lemon. You it got it, really but it doesn't it. make you happy. It upsets every single time. It could be because of the property is in negative cash flow. That means that the rent you're receiving is less than the mortgage amount you're paying out every month. It could be because uh, you have a costly service charge. You have a costly maintenance bills. I mean, I remember property we have in um, East London that has 280 pound service charge. Ridiculous. If you remove the service charge, your cash flow is all right. But because the service charge is so expensive, it costs a fortune. It could have also problems with uh, finance. It could be on a high interest rate. It could be a property that you bought at the, uh, at the time on a subprime rate. And uh, in fact, there's, uh, if there are some investors here that have been buying for many years, you may remember back in the height of the market, many investors were buying property off plan in city centres and generally speaking, those properties were coming with cashbacks or you was buying there with no money down where the builder was giving an incentive for you to buy the properties. So basically what we were doing, we were buying overpriced properties that come with finance so that we didn't have to put any money in. And uh, in fact, what's going to happen with those properties now is that if we're not already in negative cash flow, that means that the rent doesn't cover the mortgage cost. If we're not already in negative cash flow, which I certainly am on some of mine, if there's a half a percent hike in interest rates, a lot of people in this room will be in negative cash flow. Hopefully well, you've got a few other properties. Santander recently increased their standard variable rate from 4.24 to 4.74, I think, and all of a sudden created 70,000 negatively cash flow properties for investors in the whole country. So our instalment contract idea negates the problem of increased interest rates and negative cash flow. So we're going to show you some examples of those. Um, empty pockets, negative so that's cash what you, flow. Well, yeah, that's what lemons do too. So let's have a think about this. Let's have a think about how we get rid of these bad properties. Show me an example of this the property in Manchester. This is my own property in Manchester that I bought at the height of the market. How much did you have as a cashback? No? Well, I got £12,000 cashback on this. In fact, it was such a good deal, I bought two of them and I've got £24,000 cash back, uh, which I thought was great. But do you know, when I, I bought this when I was a mortgage broker, and uh, I was arranging mortgages for people all day, every day, on these properties where they were getting massive cash backs. 
and most investors were living on the cashbacks. They didn't need to worry about renting the property out because the cashback was paying for their exorbitant lifestyle. The problem is, things catch up with us. Do you still have the cashback? I spent that on the negative cash flow, unfortunately. How does that make you feel? Uh, pretty, pretty bad. I've been dealt a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's sort this lemon, shall we? Well, yeah. I'll give you a little bit of details on this property. We are short on time, real quick. Uh, he had a mortgage of 137,000 hours standing on it. Okay. Um, and the property was only worth 99. I say 99 because there was another one bedroom flat for sale in the block and it wasn't sold. So I'll be generous. It was worth about 99. So it was nearly 40,000 pounds in negative cash flow. So basically, if you had to sell it today, 40,000 pounds, it will be 40,000 pounds lighter if you had to sell it today. So you didn't want that. So what I did is I uh, packaged the property as an installment contract. So I said, well, I know. We can't sell it a lot more expensive than what it's worth. But I said, well, let's try to sell it for 145 instead of 99, like the neighbor was selling. But put it with a 5,000 pound deposit and monthly payments of 805 pounds. So he was already renting the property out. 525 rent, 550 mortgage, plus service charge, plus ground rent, void, and maintenance. Well, he was nearly 150 pounds in negative cash flow and also in negative equity. It's the ideal lemon. <laughs> Perfect lemon. You can't have a better lemon. Perfect. So, buyer moved in. He loved the opportunity that he could buy with 5,000 deposit. He didn't want to put all his money in. He had about 15 in his bank because I checked his income and I checked his deposit as well. And he loved the fact that he could buy with 5,000 pound deposit. And he wanted to invest the, all, uh, the other bit of his money somewhere else. So, he wanted uh, to have a nice modern flat in central Manchester because he was a coach driver driving between London and Manchester he wanted somewhere to stay overnight so he loved the fact that he could buy that flat I don't know what he liked uh, but 5,000 pounds he moved in he spent 805 pounds he's paying the service charge and the ground rent now thank you because he's a buyer he's not a tenant anymore if you have an option Still, the landlord is responsible for service charging ground rent, but with installment contracts, forget about that. Okay? So, we make 260 pounds cash flow, positive cash flow now from a property that was about 150 negative cash flow. So, we're going to make 15,000 pounds over the next five years. It's already two years into the contract. So, we're not going to make anything on the back end because it is in negative equity and probably the amount the buyer will always will be level with what we owe in the bank. So, when he cashes out in year five, we're not going to have any back end. But we so managed to turn out a property that is £40,000 in negative equity into £20,000 of profit. So, I've recouped my uh, £12,000 cash back again, thank you. Uh, got rid of a lemon and uh, turned it over to somebody else who's happy to be living in the property. Well, you actually profit £60,000. Well, we had the 40,000 loss back to the 20,000 profit, 60,000. Yeah. How many of those in the room tonight? Anybody got a lemon that well, they'd like to shift? If it's not a lemon today, is it likely to be a lemon when we have a rate increase fairly soon? So let's talk about well, some I'm of those. I'm happy to structure some so of those. So let's have a look at the second lemon. This was a, just a, a one bedroomed um, ground floor ex council flat with a garden. For those of you who are saying HMOs are profitable, let, let's show you how to make more money from a one bedroom flat than you're going to make from a five or six bed HMO. So the nice thing about it was that it had a garden, it had a summer house in the garden and that's what helped me sell it to, um, to a lady who wanted to buy it on installment contract. So I'd let the property for many years, uh, the value when I purchased it was around about 105000 I did a no money down deal, I ended up with a mortgage of about 76000 and I paid I think about 74000 for the property. Um, so I, I got a bit of cash back on that as well using a creative financing strategy which we still use today and it's a legal process uh, that we use today and if you want to know more about that I'm happy to share that with you at the back of the room. So um, I'm fed up with this property because the guy upstairs wears big boots and he's got no carpets and he's got a big dog and I'm forever replacing the tenants in there and every time I replace the tenants I have to go and cut the grass in the garden and repair the property 
and replace the tenants every six months because they get fed up with the guy upstairs. So I've decided to sell it, and Gillian comes along. I asked her for £5,000 deposit, and she said, can I give you more so that I can keep monthly payments low? So she gave us £25,000. The interesting thing is that she paid us 125000 for the property on instalment contracts with a 25000 deposit. The property is only worth 100000 She was happy to pay way over the odds. In fact, she had a survey carried out on the property. The valuer said it's only worth 100 She said, I'm happy to pay 125 because I can move in for 25000 and I can't get a mortgage anyway. So, the figures were cash flow in 300 we cash flow in 300 pounds on it because she gave us a quite hefty uh, deposit. Uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't make the same cash flow that we would make if she paid us 5,000 deposit. So for that reason, we are only cash flow in 300 pounds. That was going to give us 18,000 pounds over a uh, five-year period. And uh, with the back end profit of um, back end payment of 18,000. So I'm going to make a pay a profit on this of £61,000, I would have struggled to make £18,000 out of this property over the next 10 years if it was rented, having to replace the tenant every six months. So now, I'm sure Julian's very happy in there and getting on well with the neighbour upstairs, and um, we've got £61,000 in the bank over a five-year term. And I've got one bedroom element. flat. One bedroom flat. So this looks like a bus actually, doesn't it? It's a, it's a nice studio. <laughs> uh, well, it's not. It's, it's a by the bus stop. Two bed, two, two bath, then... Um, That's a more than flat. It's a typical example of those flats you would buy in 2007, massively overpriced. Well, this had a mortgage of 232000 and it's only worth about 160. Massively negative, uh, negative equity. So, but it was a friend of ours, so we wanted to help her out. And she said, well, don't take the property away from me, I don't want it, I can't afford the monthly payment, just take it away, I don't want it anymore. If you make any profits, let them go. And we said, well, I don't think we can make much profits from them, uh, but let's give it a go. So when we look at the mortgage papers, we realized that the right on it was really, really cheap. It was a mortgage express a mortgage that was 1.74. And we realized, okay, so if we sell this property to a buyer, uh, higher rate will have massive cash flow every month. In fact, we can use that cash flow to repay that negative equity down. And we put it on the computer and we said, okay, mm, so we're not going to sell it for 230. We said, well, let's try it for 140 and let's see if anyone buys. Because this is in East London and very close to central London, we had a lot of inquiries. We put it for 240, 5,000 deposit moves you in, and 1113 pounds monthly payment. And we had a lot of inquiries, but one of the ladies, she said, I have 7,000 pounds, can I move in? I said, well, when would you like to see the flat? She saw the flat, and she never asked anything about the price of the place. She never questioned the price. She said, I love the fact that I can buy with 7,000 pound deposit. I work in, the Can in Canary Wharf, it's just, few stops away and she moved in straight away. So how much did we pay for this? We paid nothing. So how much are we making out of this? Five fifty one a month is the cash flow. Thirty three thousand over the five year term if she cashes out in five years. Back end, nothing at the back end because it's so seriously in negative equity. We're paying down the negative equity from the uh, from the upfront and the cash flow. Yeah, we would have had greater cash flow, but because of the fact that some of that cash flow we're using to repay the existing mortgage down we only have 550 pounds cash flow. So we're going to make on this 40,000 pounds. 40,000 pounds for a property that was nearly 70, 80 grand in negative equity. So some people in the audience this evening will own properties like this with this type of negative equity. Everywhere we go, we find them. And that's the type of deal that we can do just by putting it through the, the instalment contract. It works structure. for the buyer, it works for the seller, it works for us. So, um, we're going to very quickly go through a scenario where we actually got a mortgage on this property, traditional mortgage, using a no money down strategy, again where we didn't put any money into the deal, but we're going to show you how using that strategy and using an instalment contract on the back end as an exit strategy, it creates massive, massive profits. So Masood's going to just go through this because it's his, this is his, one of his favourites. This is his girlfriend, Jane. <laughs> You got on very well with Jane, the, the seller. 
I'll come on with so quick because we've got this is a three bedroom minutes. house in Gravesend, local to us, very local, Kent again, our favourite area. So, uh, three bedroom house. Um, she's been on the market for, again, a very long time, eight, nine months, and she wanted to sell this place and wanted to buy herself a caravan. But in this instance, she didn't have a big mortgage. She had only she a She wanted small a caravan because she was a gypsy lady and she needed to move away from the house back to a caravan. She bought herself a land and she just needed the caravan to put it on. So <laughs> Give us the figures. £24,000 debt on the property, very small mortgage. She just wanted to move away. She didn't like the property anymore. The caravan was £78,000. Wow, so really nice looking thing, but a lot of money for a caravan. <coughs> So we agreed to pay her enough money that we buy her the caravan. So we had to actually go to the bank and get a mortgage. So we got a mortgage for £120,000 and gave her £110,000 now. And we promised to give her another £30,000 within 25. a five-year period. Was it? 25 there, it says. Okay, 25. That's 135 in total we was going to oh, pay. Oh, yes, 135 altogether. Absolutely. So we agreed to pay her 135 altogether for a property that is worth 160 and we agreed to pay the 135 in two chunks one chunk borrowing from our bank 110 and the other 25 when our buyer cashes out so we got 10,000 cash back yeah we got 10,000 pounds cash back she got her caravan and we got the house this is the house nice house it's all right lovely curtains it had all those gold sort of fittings on the windows really there were seven interior doors, and each door cost a thousand pounds. She imported the tiles from Italy, personally. It was beautiful inside. There she is, Jane. And uh, Jane and... Uh, and the young boyfriend. Son, yeah. No, that's her grandson there, really. <laughs> and uh, she even gave us a nice testimonial, and she's, uh, she's put spelt Masood's name with a little love heart, look. Because <laughs> 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 she liked him so much. Um, so, sold on an instalment contract, and that's where the profit came in, because we, we purchased using a very creative strategy, so we didn't actually spend any money, in fact we banked £10,000, but when we sold it on an instalment contract, Masood's going to go through the figures. At the time I went really, really greedy, I said I'm going to make hundred grand from this deal, and I'm, and I'm going to try to make hundred grand until, and I'm going to market it until I find a buyer that will accept that. So 